Let's get to the NBA playoffs, please. And the race out west where Anthony Edwards and the T-Wolves beat the living hell out of the Denver Nuggets last night by 45 points. They were up 50, won by 45. Edwards led Minnesota with 27 points and was a plus minus 45 in just 34 minutes on the floor. The T-Wolves have now forced a game seven in Denver on Sunday for a chance to go to the Western Conference Finals. Some key injuries of note, Jamal Murray suffered a right elbow injury after bumping into Rudy Gobert. And of course, Anthony Edwards fell on his back, but says he'll be ready to go on Sunday. Um, I was shocked at what I witnessed. Anthony Edwards is such a stud. I'm going to say this, though. Game seven's a different. It's Anthony Edwards' first game seven. It's Carl Anthony Towns' first game seven. Rudy Gobert has only been in two, and he split one and one in each of them. And, oh, by the way, Mike Conley, your veteran point guard that Anthony Edwards loved so much, his career in game sevens are 0-4. Averaging 13 points and 32% shooting and 23% from three-point range, which is nothing to write home about. They're in Denver for a game seven. Now, the Minnesota Timberwolves defense amps it up. Like no others. They're the best defense in the NBA this year. And they put the clamps on Denver yesterday. No question about it. And Carl Anthony Towns obviously made some jump shots or whatever, but it was really about Anthony Edwards and it's about their collective defensive prowess. They were absolutely sensational. They were on the Denver Nuggets like piranhas. And the Denver Nuggets had absolutely positively no answer. The thing for me, though, was this. I saw a whole bunch of missed shots. I saw Jamal Murray open. First half, he shoots one for 10. I saw Michael Porter open. He was missing. I saw Kentavious Caldwell Pope open. He was missing. I saw Aaron Gordon open. He was missing. Is that really what you expect to happen in the game seven? I don't. I think they make some of those shots rather than miss them with those familiar rims that they play in 41 regular season nights a year. And I think that Denver is going to have his work cut out for it. But let me tell you something. That don't mean they can't win this game. They were down 0-2. And you saw what they did to Minnesota over the next three games. And then Minnesota shows up again. And now that they've shown up again and they've even the series at 3-3, again, they've never been in a game seven. They've never been in a game seven. And we're going to find out a couple of things. We're going to find out about Anthony Edwards. We're going to find out about Carl Anthony Towns. We can't say we're going to find out anything about Denver because they're the reigning defending champions. But we're going to find something out because here's what I noticed, y'all. Did you see Nikola Jokic just standing there? He wouldn't sit down for a long time. He was just standing there on the sidelines, staring down at Minnesota as they continue to run up the score and just obliterate the Denver Nuggets. You don't think a three-time league MVP like that got that kind of pride? You don't think a champion like that got a kind, that kind of pride? Did you see what Denver did in coming back 0-2? You don't think they got that kind of pride? Because I'm here to tell you they do. And I think that Nikola Jokic is going to show up, and he's going to show up big time for game seven. But I think Anthony Edwards is going to show up too. <laughs> he's just that dude. There was MJ, there was Kobe, and then there's him. And that's a big deal coming from somebody like me because I saw incredible talent throughout the years. Vince Carter's going into the Hall of Fame. He's an incredible talent. The best in-game dunker I've ever seen. And, and he stuck around for over 20 years with an NBA career. One of the nicest human beings you'll ever meet. Once the one knock against Vince Carter, that that attitude, that oomph, that go-get-it mentality, that dog in him, he ain't had that because he was such a nice guy. And that's what we saw. Did you see Anthony Edwards at the press conference last night, the podium? And you saw when they asked him, did you say something to the folks in the Denver locker room when y'all lost game five? He said, hell yeah, I did. I told those motherfuckers, see, see you game seven. That's what I said. I'm quoting him. I'm not cussing. I'm quoting him. I told those motherfuckers, see you game seven. We'll be back. Hell yeah. And then got up. His attitude is different, and he wants it. And we're going to see whether or not he can deliver it. Make no mistake about it, because you know Michael Malone got something up his sleeve that he saved for Game 7. He ain't going to show all his cards. But I'm telling you right now, 
It can't just be the Anthony Edwards show. Now, here's the difference. We talked about supplementary parts showing up and helping out. But in Anthony Edwards' case, he got to show up first. Because you need his greatness to match that of Jokic. So it can even the scales and then you set the table for somebody else to step in and do what they're supposed to do. That's what we're talking about here with Anthony Edwards. And it's going to be real interesting to see what transpired because I'm here to tell you right now. Minnesota could lose. Denver could beat the brakes off of them. But Denver has shown us they could do the same. I'm sorry, Minnesota has shown us they could do the same to Denver. I can't wait for this game seven. This is special. Now, I'm hoping the next team I talk about doesn't have to go to a game seven, and that's my New York Knicks, okay? Because they head into Indianapolis tonight for game six and a chance to close out the series. The last time the Knicks played there was Sunday when they got blown out by 32 on Mother's Day, okay? Mother's Day Massacre is what they call it. Tonight, they have a chance to avenge that loss, and they'll likely have to do it without OG Ananobi. He's still nursing his hamstring injury. I'm going to tell you this. Indiana has no answer for Jalen Brunson. The way he's bust Nemhart's ass and arrested the Indiana Pacers, he actually should be arrested for assault his damn self. I'm being facetious, of course, but Jalen Brunson has been nothing short of, of abusing defenders from Indiana. So much so that you got Chris Carlisle, the head coach, cussing out people in in press conferences because he ain't really cussing at them. He's cursing at his own team. They looked soft. They looked like they didn't want it. They was fumbling and bumbling the ball all over the place, commit turnovers at every turn. Jalen Brunson, meanwhile, crossover, dribble, step, back threes, stutter, step and step and back, moving forward, evasive measure. I mean, damn, he was busting their ass. Having said all of that, he can't be the key tonight. It's going to have to be Josh Hart and Dante DiVincenzo. See, you don't want a game seven. On one hand, and I pose this to a lot of people, listen to my logic here. Initially, I was thinking, don't you want time to prepare for Boston? That's what I was thinking. That doesn't necessarily matter now. But Josh Hart and Dante DiVincenzo are going to be keys. Dante DiVincenzo's shot is going to be key, his shot-making ability. He needs to hit those threes when he's open for it. So his shot-making ability is one way to go. Here's the other. Josh Hart's heart, his guts, his willingness to go get that damn basketball, no matter who is, who's it up against. Josh Hart got to bring out that game in him tonight. Close-out games are always the most difficult. And that's what Josh Hart's going to have to deal with. He can't have three rebounds like he did in, in game four on Mother's Day. He's got to have the 18 rebounds he had in game three when the New York Knicks nearly pulled it out. And it took a miracle from Nemhard from 31 feet to save the day. We can't put ourselves in that situation again. That's what the New York Knicks have to do. Josh Hart, Dante DiVincenzo, they are the keys. They're the keys to the success for the New York Knicks. You get production from them. Not to shove aside Hartenstein because you need his offensive rebounds. He had 12 in game five. But you need additional weapons if you're the New York Knicks. Stepping up other than Brunson. Because I think Indiana would be better prepared for that tonight. Brunson alone won't be enough. Somebody else will have to give you something. So we can get that out the way too now. Before I go to break, I want to bring this up about Kyrie Irving. He plays on the Dallas Mavericks, um, who are up 3-2 on this series after beating Oklahoma City in Game 5. My man Shea Gilgis Alexander is not disappointing me. Four straight games of 30 points or more, in which he's averaging 32 points on 51% shooting, 45% from three-point range, along with nine rebounds, 6.8 assists, and two and a half blocks per game. Shea Gilgis Alexander, my vote for league MVP, he doing his job. Where Jalen Williams at? Where Chet Holmgren at? Where's these cats at? Even though Dort is doing, you know, a lot of defensive work on Luka Doncic, even though it didn't work the other night. Let's call it what it is. But here's what got me thinking about I might have made the wrong pick with OKC and Dallas would probably win this series. This kid Gaffrey got hops. It's an unbelievable athleticism. We got that going on. We got Luka 
Sore knee, sore ankle, different legs, don't matter. He shows up. He drops what he drops. We see P.J. Washington doing his thing. We see Derrick Jones catching alley-oops doing his thing. But that damn Kyrie Irving is just lurking. One of the most prolific scorers we've ever seen. One of the greatest finishers at the basket in NBA history. This dude, Kyrie Irving, is just Going in there, flying in there for rebounds, giving tap outs to Luka Doncic one minute, feeding Tim Hardaway Jr. the next, PJ Washington the next, etc. Kyrie's a showstopper. And we know that ain't his forte. Having two points in the first half, having six points in the first half, stuff like that. Ladies and gentlemen, that ain't Kyrie Irving. At some point, an explosion is imminent. That's just how I feel about it. I think he's lurking. He's waiting. And the bigger the moment, the more he will shine. And in Dallas for a game six with an opportunity to get to the conference finals, Kyrie and Luka, somebody that I'm going to look past now, no, I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it. I'm sorry.